Palestinians, Philistines, Philistines, Palestinians. Are they different? Are they the same? One we know is a biblical people mentioned in the Bible many, many times. But the Palestinians today are a completely, completely different people. But here's the weird thing. The Palestinians were invented by none other than the KGB. That's the Balagan connection for today. Stay with me until the end and we'll see how Palestinians, Philistines, KGB, and God's vengeance tie in together. This is David Tal, and let's go into who and what are the Palestinians. Well, let's start off with the Philistines, because we all know about the Philistines from the Bible. We've heard about them in the Bible. They're mentioned in the Bible, I think, 286 times. They're mentioned in, in the book of Genesis. Uh, Abraham had to deal with them. Uh, they're mentioned in Joshua. They're mentioned a lot in the book of, of Samuel, and, and all the way down to the end. Uh, a little bit of the history, the Philistines were sea people is what we call. They were basically Greek islanders from the Greek islands, from the uh, Aegean Sea, who left that area and actually became like the Vikings of the Mediterranean Sea. They would kind of land their ships. They were seafarers, and we, we call them the sea people. Uh, they would land their ships on the shores, uh, rape, loot, plunder, and, and disappear. Uh, Egypt had to deal with them in the beginning because the shores of Egypt were more lucrative, so they would lay, land in the Nile Delta, and, and they made a lot of a balagan there. And, and the Egyptians, we know from different historical sources, kicked them out a couple of times. And what they did is they moved up the, the map that you see uh, and, and settled in the area of the coast that has a city called Gaza in the middle of it. The Philistines were our nemesis through the Old Testament. We had to deal with them and again and again, and even after we dealt with them, they came back. And again, just, just to go back to, you know, things like David killed Goliath, who was a Philistine from the city of Gat, okay? But then King Saul was killed by the Philistines in a place called Beit Sheen. I mean, this is something that we had to deal with them. We put them down. We dealt with them again. We put them down. But basically, they were Israel's main problem in the Old Testament. There were a couple of reasons for this. First of all, they were settled along the coast. They, they, they moved out, they moved in. The second thing that, that they had was a technological advantage. The Bible tells us that we went to sharpen our plows uh, uh, with the Philistines because they were in the Iron Age while the Israelites, while we were still in the Bronze Age. And, and look at the depiction of the story of David and Goliath. You can see the different technologies that are used in this armor and this armor and this weapons and this weapons. But but basically, we had to deal with them again and again because they were fighting against us and we were pushing them back towards the shore. In the end, David finished them off. But they did come back and, and even the book of Joel mentions the Philistines. I think it was Joel who said, Now, what do you have against me, Tyre and Sidon? By the way, Tyre and Sidon were Philistine uh, outposts that are now inside Lebanon. Very interesting. Uh, you're repaying me for something that I have done. If you are paying me back, I will swiftly and speedily return on your heads what you have done. For you have taken my silver and my gold and carried off my finest treasures to your temples. You sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks that you may send them away from their homeland. This is Joel talking about the Philistines. This is what we've been dealing with down through the Bible. But... Are the Philistines that we're talking about in the Bible the Palestinians that we're talking about today? And the definitive answer is no. The Philistines were completely, completely eradicated. Uh, well, in the beginning during the time of King David, later on during the Babylonian period, and for certain during the Greek period. The thing is that the area where they had their cities, the city of Gad, Ekron, Ashkelon, and Gaza, the area where they had their cities, kept the name. Just like Chinatown keeps the name in certain cities, it is a geographical area, and it was usually designated to the area of the coast. That's when it changed. 
because in 138, the emperor of the Roman Empire, a guy named Hadrian, who was really, really, really upset with the Jews because they had rebelled against the Roman Empire twice, decided to disassociate the Jews who lived in a place called Judea, the Judean hills, okay, disassociate the Jews from Judea. And one of the ways that he did it is by renaming the whole Roman province that we're talking about, Syria, Palestina. He wanted to create one political entity, but he wanted to disassociate the Jews from Judea. And from then on, the geographical area of the coast becomes the name for the whole area between the river and the sea. But it was a geographical area. It never was a political entity. There never was a Philistine empire. There never was a Philistine government. And over the years, when everything changes, we had Roman Empire, we had Byzantine Empire, we had Arab empires, we had Crusaders empires. Uh, some of the people called the area Judea, but some of the people kept the name Palestina or Philistines. The thing is that the people living in Palestine never disassociated themselves from the other Arabs. And, and one of the interesting things is that in the modern period, the name Palestine is still there, but the people decided that they needed a connection. The Palestinians that we know today are an invented people. Let's make this clear. Let's say this again. The Palestinians were invented by none other than the KGB. The KGB saw what was going on in the Middle East in the late 50s and, and early 60s and decided to do what the KGB, by the way, in their, how do you say, the skunk works, have done in different places. They did this in Colombia. They did this in Bolivia. They decided that the best thing to do for political reasons is to create instability in certain areas where they wanted to have influence. Uh, they did that in South America. And what they would do is they would create national entities that people could hatch, latch on to. They would create nationalities that people would connect to, and they would use that as a way to raise the people. Again, remember, we're talking about socialist communists. Raise the people up against the foreign powers, and that would increase their influence in the areas that we're talking about. In the 1960s, actually 1964, the KGB invented the Palestinian nationality. They actually hired a guy named Yasser Arafat who was not Palestinian at all. They invented his birth certificate to make him in Palestinian, and he became the leader of this national movement that was called the Palestinians. Why did they call it the Palestinians? Because the geographical area was Palestine, even though there never was a people. And it's really interesting to hear the Palestinians talk about this. What they say is this, and I'm reading a quote from the Palestinian Zahir Mukhajin, Okay, who gave an interview to the Dutch, inter uh, Dutch newspaper and said this, the Palestinian people does not exist. This is a Palestinian PLO, Palestinian Liberation Organization representative. The Palestinian people does not exist. The creation of a Palestinian state is only a means for continuing our struggle against the state of Israel, for our Arab entity. In reality, today there's no difference between Jordanians, Palestinians, Syrians, and Lebanese. Only for political and tactical reasons do we talk about the existence of a Palestinian people. So the Palestinian people were created by other sources and used to create a destabilizing situation inside the Middle East. And here's the thing, it worked. It worked big time because the Arabs who had lost to Israel in 1948 and had lost to Israel in 1967 had latched on to this nationalistic movement and they decided to take that and for that to be their reason for fighting against Israel. The thing is that this is an excuse. The reason for fighting against Israel is because they don't accept the existence of the state of Israel. And they say that again and again. The Hamas, who is representing the Palestinian in this struggle, is saying very clearly, we want Israel to disappear. Until then, we feel obliged, we feel accepted, we feel that it's okay to do whatever we need to do to kick Israel out. That means raping, looting, beheading, kidnapping, and everything that we're seeing today. So, to answer the question, basically, are the Palestinians the Philistines, are the Philistines the Palestinians? Unequivocally, no. But there is a connection. Because the Philistines were known for their brutality.
The Philistines were known for their ungodliness. Okay, the Philistines killed King Saul and put his body, his beheaded body, on the walls of Beit Sha'an. The Philistines were known for doing terrible things to people, so terrible that the word Philistine, the term Philistine becomes known in Western civilization is ungodliness. In many cases, the Bible actually calls the Philistines the uncircumcised. Now, the word in Hebrew for circumcised is brit, which means covenant. The people that have no covenant with God. These are the ferocious, these are the violent, these are the ungodly people that live in Gaza and are the ones who poked out the eyes of Samson in order to show that they have overcome God's power. These are the ones who kidnapped people and took them up to Tyre and Sidon. And these are the ones, for instance, that Hezekiah fought. The Bible says, by the way, in 2 Kings, Hezekiah dominated the Philistines and pushed them all the way back to Gaza. Why am I putting all this together? Because the Philistines have come back to be the nemesis of Israel. The Philistines, have, the Palestinians have come back to be this, this problem that we have to deal with again and again, and, and we're dealing with right now. The, the Palestinians have become the ones who, who kind of trade in slaves and in our young people in, in the hostage situation today. And, and again, I cannot help but make the biblical connection to this. The Philistines are the ones that Ezekiel says this. Ezekiel 25, verse 15 says this. Thus says the Lord, because the Philistines have taken vengeance, yes, have taken vengeance with spite in their heart to destroy his people uh, with never-ending hatred, behold, I will stretch out my hand to the Philistines and I will destroy the rest of the seacoast, and I will execute great vengeance on them. Everything is connected. So, no, the Palestinians are not the ancient Philistines. But they have bought in to the same ungodliness, and in my mind, after what happened on October 7, have bought in to the same vengeance that Ezekiel is talking about in chapter 25. That's the Balagan connection for today. This is David Tal. Hope to see you soon.